I'm Erin from Blue Box Plus, and I'm here with Mike McKenzie, who's an independent filmmaker. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and what you do? Okay, so I'm uh, Mike McKenzie. I am a cameraman and filmmaker. Um, so I've got various clients that I film for, um, from uh, music videos, documentaries, corporate videos, uh, sometimes funerals and weddings also. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my, my remit at the moment. Cool. And how did you get into filmmaking? Well, probably about 10 years ago, I decided to, I wanted to study something new, either music or film. And I looked at uh, what I was doing in my personal life and I thought, wow, I suddenly realised that whenever there was an event, birthday party, party, um, you know, I was used to work in a school as well. So always try to grab the camera and film or do photography. So I thought, hmm. I think I like that. Can make I thought, a living yeah, out of this. I thought, let me do this. I enjoy doing this, so let me do that, you know. So I went and did a bit of studying and that, and um, yeah, off I went. Cool, and you do the whole shebang, don't you? So you do the filming, the editing. Yes, that's correct. And yeah, you produce yeah. Yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, I can organise a shoot, uh, meet with clients, I can um, sort out all the technical equipment with sound and with the visuals as well. So that's what I do. How do people find you, or how do you find people? Okay, so one of the things is that I do is that I network like crazy. So, you know, I, whenever I go places, you know, and you, you get into general conversation, people say, what do you do? And I ask them what they do. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I might have a card on me and I'll give them a card. Um, you know, it could be six months from then I'll get a call and say, oh, I remember you from Suss and Church. Um, I've got a video that I need make, making. Can you come and do it? Um, also, as well, I work with different people and support other people. So sometimes they need films as well, so it's more in that, in that kind of way. Um, I do have a website called www.drumcamfilms.tv, um, which is on, on the web. So yeah, so there's uh, those ways as, as well, not to mention Facebook. <laughs> yeah, Facebook is <laughs> the new it's there, it's there. platform, it's isn't there. it? So where do you meet your clients? Um, I generally go to their, their office space in their environment, because um, a lot of the times I might be actually filming there as well. Um, so that's what I found as well, is that I generally go to, to their, their space and their, find out what their needs are and, and see the space at the same time. So you go to their environment? Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah. What would you say your favourite um, type of video film to make is? Do you prefer the documentaries or the music? Um, it's really funny. I quite like all of them really because I think but for all different reasons so I suppose when I do documentaries it's like wow I didn't know that was happening in this area or I didn't know this person was doing this particular thing you know um, I, I was doing some uh, a photography course a couple of weeks ago at um, Hanwell Community Centre and one of the people that was on the course uh, ran a museum in the basement of the building so I went down there to see what this place was and I thought oh my gosh this guy has got stuff in there that people need to see, you know. So straight away, we're, we're talking about all this stuff from 50, 60 years ago. Um, even toys that I grew up with were on display. So when I saw that, I thought, hmm. I says, uh, do you fancy me doing a little promo documentary on you? He goes, yeah, I would like that very much. You know, so, you know, connecting with people, finding out about uh, history. I think, I think as you ask that question, I'm thinking though, I quite like history stuff. History <laughs> stuff is, I like that. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I've done but a few things. Into yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes you meet people, and you know, I've I've done a couple of people. Like I, there was this guy that um, I used to work with called Russ Henderson. He's he's passed away now, but um, I did a documentary on him. And when I sat and talked with him, it was like people need to hear this story. Uh, when things have happened 60, 70 years ago, sometimes people get very cloudy as to what actually happened. But when you see a person actually saying, "No, I was there." and this is what happened, you know, then other people can hear it. I think, wow, I didn't know that's how it started. Or I didn't know that's what happened with that, you know? Um, so yeah, I, like, I quite like history. What, do you remember what your first, like, project was, or the first thing that you were like, yeah, I'm gonna film this and I'm gonna make it into something? 
Okay. Um, there's a couple of things. One of them is the documentary I did on Russell Henderson, um, because when I made that, um, I was studying at college, and um, I really enjoyed the process. You know, talking to Russell Henderson about Notting Hill Carnival, hearing the stories about that, and you know, and luckily for me, you know, call it fate, whatever you want to call it. Like where I live in Kensal Rise, around the corner was a cinema called the Lexi, and it, it had just opened, and I thought, hmm, I'm going to show my film in there. So this was me trying to psych myself up, you know, because like, I never approached a cinema before. And, you know, I went there and they were very approachable. And they said, yeah, no problem. I thought, wow. <laughs> you know, so I got screened um, at the Lexus Cinema. I put it into the Portobello Film Festival. Um, I think that was in 2008 or 2009. Um, you know, a big crowd came. I actually won an award for the best audience film because uh, lots of people came to see, you know, this film about Russell Henderson. Um, I then was able to get it to be shown in Trinidad, into a couple of cinemas in Trinidad and Barbados. So that was that was that was quite exciting. Um, I'm working on a short film at the moment where um, around fostering, um, where it's about a young boy who's in foster care, and it just sort of um, shows the interactions with different people in the community, like school, um, social services, the foster carers friends and he's got this, this, this is a short story about this young boy that's going through and how he sort of deals with things and it's for me I'm, I'm passionate about that film I've been working on it a couple of years now and um, so it's a film that nobody's asked me to make um, it's just me deciding do I, I want to share this story because um, one of the things I, I do do fostering as a family we do that um, so that's where the idea kind of came to, to put that together um, oh, wow. yeah what do you think of these um new platforms where you can kind of get crowdfunded and create a trailer and get people in, on board. Do you think that's a, a new good thing? I that, think they're a fabulous thing yeah. because that <laughs> helped fund one of my films that I'm working on now. You know, okay. uh, a good friend of mine said to me, Michael, you should try a craft. I said, what's that? You know, so I went on and said, oh, okay. I went, so I did a little video, a promo video of myself saying, well, <laughs> I have a great idea and this is what it's about, you know. And if you think it's a worthy cause, please put your, your ex here and um, support my film. You know, so I, I have done it and, um, you know, I was successful in, in, um, in raising money, which started me very well on, on, on the making of my film. So I think, they're, I think they're a great film because I think you are empowering people to support your project. You know, because obviously you could go to the bank or you can go to investors and, you know, yes, they will, they will have an interest, but when you've got you know, we need to put it out on social media and people, you know, back what you're doing. It's, it's, it's a nice feeling, for one, and um, you are connecting people with your, your idea, you know, and, you know, if they support it, then you also get a, a um, you know, you think, well, okay, oh, what? You, you do think this is a good idea, because sometimes you might think in isolation, I wonder if this is a good idea. You know what I mean? You put it out there, you take a risk and put it out there, and, um, you know, I've been lucky so far that people have got my back, you know what I mean, but I'm still pushing, still learning, still pushing all the time. What equipment do you use? So you've got like a couple of things over here. What's your preference yeah. brands and... Yeah, well, um, I mean, this is my, 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 my shoulder rig camera that I use here. Um, this is a Canon camera. Um, so I've got a wireless system on there. I've got my audio device here. I can plug in at least four microphones. Sometimes I'm interviewing quite a few different people, so I can plug in quite a few microphones into that. And uh, I get quite a good shot, you know? I mean, I can, uh, I can show you that one. So I'll just put it on my shoulder like that, and then uh, just look through there. And it's quite, it's quite steady, and I can just move around very easily. So depending on what I'm doing, like sometimes I'll use a tripod, or if I'm going to move it around a little bit, I will use, I will use this. And I can stay in focus quite well because my eyepiece is quite, you know, I can see, you know, pin sharp on that. And I was quite lucky the other day, I went to the opticians and they said that I got the eyes of a 30-year-old man or something. So <laughs> I was quite um, impressed with that when, for some reason, I shouldn't do. Right yeah. now. I'm only 29, I'm not even sure why they would say that. Yeah, that yeah. was rude. Um, yeah, and I got this new toy. I mean, I borrowed this off another cameraman that I work with, um, sort of a... Sturdy man gyro camera, so I'm going to be playing with that later today. Once I power it up, it should be fun with that. 
Yeah, just to, you know, so if I want to do like, so there's certain shots I might want to run around a little bit and just keep the, like, the shot nice and smooth. So I'll be using stuff like this as well. And then, yeah. Do you set out with shots in mind and what you want to gain from the day? Or do you let it work out, work itself organically and leave it to the editing? I, I try to work out shots. So I might even have a little shot list. Right? I want to get this, I want to get this. Like, I want to get the outside of the building. You know, I want to get to you know, the front door. I might want to get um, people coming in, people leaving. Um, but also as well, I'm flexible. Because what I've found is that things will happen that you don't expect. And you just got to go with it. You know, you can't always predict. But what I have found for myself is that if you plan, at least then you've got a plan. You know, and then mm. you are, if things change, it's not, it's not a major... It's not a major problem because I can adapt and go, okay, well, I thought I was going to just interview, you know, the bride and the groom, but suddenly I got to interview 15 different aunties. It's all good, yeah? It's just about negotiating the time and the order. This is probably a really tricky question. Okay, okay. <laughs> How do you know when it's done? How do you know when this is finished and this is what you want to put okay. out? Okay. <laughs> well, when I'm filming, I am constantly checking what I filmed in my head to, to have I got everything that I need for one. Um, sometimes I do get a bit eager and, you know, and, and I'm, keep, I'm constantly filming. Um, sometimes the batteries might die. That might be, <laughs> that like, might you know, be the like definitive end. Um, sometimes it might be exhaustion, you know. Um, am I effective anymore? Yes or no. Um, but also as well, have I got the story? Have I got the footage to tell the story? Because what, what I try to avoid is having too much footage because then it can get a little, can get a little crazy. You know, spend days and days and days looking through footage. You know, and I think it's about getting the right footage. Once you've planned your shots and you know you're going to get these shots, then you get a few variations of those shots and get a few extra things as well. You know? And then that's, for me, how, how I know, how I got my, my shots that I want. When it comes to your editing, yep. what's the routine? When, when does that happen? Like, is it a night time overnight or is it during the day? Um, I try to do it in the day, at least then I can keep my both eyes awake. Yeah. Um, I, I, sometimes I do things at night, sometimes I might just be, my head might be so full up that I think, right, I can't do nothing in the day. So, you know, at night time everything is still, I'm still, my brain is relaxed, I'm not thinking about anything else, I don't, I don't have to go anywhere. And I will, I will sit down and start to go through my footage. You know, um, but you know, in terms of stages, first thing is, is to down, <laughs> download it ASAP, <laughs> and um, you know, back up the data onto another hard drive. So at least I've got at least two, three copies of it. Mm. Um, and then, and then the process of looking at the footage: have I got all the audio good? Have I got good visuals? And just double checking what I have, and, just, and then I will build my story based on on um, what we've agreed. And same question for the editing. Okay. When do you, when is when is the editing done? Kind of like when is the art? When do you stop? Painting? Yeah, I think um, that's uh, for me. When I watch a video and nothing niggles me, that's when I know it's done. So sometimes I'll, I'll edit it and I think, oh, that looks really good, but that bit niggles me. That bit niggles me. So as I've got more experience, I've I've started to listen to my gut feeling. If you, if you know what I mean, like I try to when I first started, I never used to listen to that. Yeah, and I thought. And then I would carry, I would, I would stop and then, you know, I might give it to the client. And he goes, yeah, I don't like that bit. And I thought, Michael, you felt that too, but you decided to ignore it. So now I listen to that a lot more than I used to. My gut feeling, that's niggly, that's niggly. I need to watch this film from beginning to end. And if there's nothing that irritates me anymore, then I know it's, it's good. Now, somebody may have a different opinion artistically or, or, you know, sometimes I've done things where people have said, well, I don't like this side of my face, so can you get rid of that clip? That's cool, yeah. Um, and you know, you do a two, two or three different cuts, and then hopefully, hopefully everybody's happy. But my main aim is to make sure everybody's happy, because I don't want to put a video out where the client is doesn't like it. There's, there's no point. For one, they're not going to come back to you. Yeah. Two, they're not going to want to show it to anybody. You know. So that is, that is my main job. Am I happy? Are they happy? If we're both happy, it's all good. So it is kind of like a collaborative yeah. experience yeah, yeah, between yeah, yeah, you yeah, and yeah. the client. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to say to you, Don't well, be. I like it and that's it. I don't care what you think. You know, it's, it's not about that, you know, so. Cool, so everybody gets the... Yeah, because I'll do a cut and I'll send it to you 
I use WeTransfer or Dropbox. You can have a look. Um, sometimes people make a few comments, you know, can you change the font or something, you know. Can okay, you make it black yeah. or white? I say, okay, cool, well, cool, well, I can do that. And, start from, and then we do, a, sort it out and then um, off it goes. And then a final product yeah, comes from exactly. two different yeah. perspectives. Yeah. And what's your latest project at the moment? What are you working um, on? There's a couple of projects I'm working on. One of them is with a music studio um, called Rubik's uh, Studio in Park Row and they specialise in recording drums and music in general. So I've started doing, um, recording some drummers with them. So I did uh, a guy called Mark Von Daisy the other day. Um, I also did uh, Harvey Mason, so I'm working on that one at the moment as a drummer, so that drumming videos basically, so for promotion of the product and the drummer themselves is what I'm working on. And also I'm working with um, a company called Young's Cats and Artification, uh, doing uh, documentaries on the borough of Elin, sort of like activities in Elin. So going out and meeting the local community and sometimes music events. Um, so we did the Hootenanny in Hanwell the other day. Um, I'm going back to Hanwell again this weekend to do a carnival, to film at the carnival. So film the activities at the carnival and interview people. So like roaming around and meeting the community and just finding out what they think about uh, what's going on in their area. And how do you approach um, places where you want to screen your um, well, what I've found is you walk through the front door. <laughs> uh, I've done that a couple of times um, and it's worked for me. And I think sometimes we hold ourselves back thinking, oh, they, they probably will say no. Um, but they might say no, but the reality is that if you don't ask... Don't get. <laughs> you know, so it's worked for me so far that I've asked um, a few cinemas, and, but it's also about timing. You know, when we had the, um, the Olympics, now I can't remember what year it was, but um, it might have been, yeah, it was here, wasn't it? So you had the Trinidadians had taken over the um, cinema in Kilburn. What is its name? And I can't remember what its name is, it escapes me. But anyway, so the Trinidadians had taken it over, right? So I went down and thought, oh, my name's Mike McKenzie. I've got a film about a Trinity a man called Russell Henderson. Can I get my film screen here in the week that you are, you know, looking after the, the Trinidadian and community? And he goes, we'll get back to you. And then they call me and goes, yeah, no problem. I said, thank you very much. You know, um, there's other cinemas that I've approached and they basically have said sometimes if you can, it's not a problem for them because sometimes it's, it's just about bums on seats. Yeah, so if you can fill the cinema, they'll, they'll show you a film, you know. So I think there was one cinema that said, well, you know, if you can generate some social media that says you can get 100 people in, we'll show it, you know. So there's, uh, there's ways. It's not all about blockbusters and that's it, you know. They may have downtime, for example, where it might be a Sunday afternoon where they will show community films, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, there's ways of... Uh, Negotiate, but the first thing is the will and the belief to even try. And once you, you've got that, then people may say yes, they may say no. And then you, you know which way you can move next. And where do a lot of your projects like that go then? How do people find them? In well, some of them are on my website and some of them are on, say, for the client's website. Um, do you have anything you'd like to <laughs> finish off with? A, a pearl of wisdom, perhaps. A pearl of wisdom, wow. <laughs> well, um, I think enjoy your life, is what I'd say. Um, don't put things off until tomorrow, if you can avoid it. And I think uh, if you need a good, uh, good uh, filmmaker crew, you can either come to myself or I'm in, based in North West London at the moment, but I can, I've got a passport, I can travel. You know, so, yeah, it's been a pleasure doing this interview with you. And uh, thank you, Blue Box Plus, for having me.